Hi, everybody. This is Dr. Katie Bailey, and I'm back to discuss the spaces of the head and neck. Our objectives are to review the spaces of the head and neck, what lives in them, and what can go wrong within them. In the masticator space, you have the muscles of mastication as well as the mandible to which they attach. You have branches of cranial nerve B3, you have lymph nodes, and you have minor salivary gland rests. Even if you can't see them, they are there. So if you have a mass in the masticator space, think about a mass involving the muscles like a rhabdomyosarcoma. You can think of a mass involving the mandible such as an osteosarcoma, or even if it's not a mass, it could be something infectious related to the mandible. Cranial nerves V3, you can have schwannomas. Lymph nodes, of course, you can have lymphoma or you can have reactive lymphadenopathy and the minor salivary gland rests can give you salivary gland tumors. The parotid space, you have the parotid gland, both the deep and superficial lobes, which are divided by the retromandibular vein. You have cranial nerve 7 and its branches within and around the parotid gland. You have lymph nodes within and around the parotid gland. You have that retromandibular vein and you have the external carotid artery. So when you see a lesion in the parotid space, you think of primary parotid tumors, both medign and malignant. You think of neurogenic tumors that can involve the facial nerve. You have lymph nodes, which can be primary interparotid or they could be metastatic lymph nodes from say a squamous cell carcinoma of the scalp. You can have a vascular lesion involving the retromandibular vein or the external carotid artery. In the carotid space you have the carotid sheath with its contents, the carotid artery, the carotid body which lives at the bifurcation, the internal jugular vein, cranial nerves 9 to 11, the sympathetic chain which runs along the carotid as well as lymph nodes within and around the carotid sheath. When you have a mass in the carotid space, of course your first thought is a carotid body tumor or paraganglioma if you have splaying of the internal and external carotid arteries, but you can have neurogenic tumors involving cranial nerves 9 to 11, you can have sympathetic chain masses, you can have lymphoma which can exist in any of these spaces. The parapharyngeal space is predominantly composed of fat, but within that fat, you can have lymph nodes. You also have minor salivary rests. You have branches of cranial nerve V3, and you have branches of the external carotid artery. So you can have a primary parapharyngeal space lesion. You can get liposarcoma. You can get lymphoma. You can get those salivary gland tumors. You can get neurogenic tumors involving the branches of cranial nerve V3, and you can get vascular lesions involving those carotid artery branches. What we really use the or pharyngeal space for is to figure out a lesion that's in a different area that's displacing that parapharyngeal fat. When you have a mass in the masticator space, it is going to displace that fat posterior medially. When you have a mass in the parotid space, it's going to displace that fat medially. When you have a mass in the carotid space, it's going to displace that fat anteromedially. And when you have a lesion in the primary pharyngeal space, it's going to displace that fat laterally. So the direction in which that fat is moved and compressed can actually give you a good idea of where a lesion is coming from so you can give a better differential diagnosis. In the retropharyngeal space, you also have a thin strip of fat between the pharyngeal mucosa and the prevertebral musculature. So in there you have fat, you have lymph nodes that can live in there, and you have minor salivary rests as well. You notice a common theme in the head and neck. You can have lymph nodes and minor salivary rests basically anywhere. In the perivertebral slash vertebral spaces, you're including the prevertebral musculature, in this case the longest coli. You have the vertebral body. You have the whole spinal canal, including its contents. You have the paraspinous musculature, as well as a variable amount of fat. You have blood vessels and nerves running through it. You have the nerves coming out of the neural foramina as nerve roots and then going into their ventral and dorsal positioning. So when you have a mass in this area, it can involve any of these. You can get rhabdomyosarcoma of the muscle. You can get metastatic disease to the muscle. Things like renal cell and melanoma like to do that. You can get lesions within the spinal canal, within the cord itself. Those are all the things to think of. In the infrahyoid visceral space, you are between the carotid sheaths. You have the trachea. You have the thyroid gland, you have the parathyroid glands, you have the esophagus, you have that tracheoesophageal groove where little lymph nodes like to live, you have vessels and nerves including the phrenic nerve running through there, you have the recurrent laryngeal nerve going through there, 
So if you have a mass in the infrahyoid visceral space, look at all of the contents and see what the lesion appears to be related to. And remember, everything medial to these above the hyoid would be a pharyngeal space, which we discussed about on the anatomy of the head and neck. Thank you for your attention.